Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Buerta. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Whenever we gather like this around the table of the Lord, we gather celebrating God's love. But also, we acknowledge our own dependence on God, that we need His grace, we need His healing and His forgiveness. He came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to gather all the nations and peoples of the world with the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that for spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who curses you I will curse. And by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. May, May your, your merciful love be upon us as, as we hope in you, O Lord. Lord. The word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and rights and his merciful love fills the earth. May, May your merciful love be upon us, us as we hope in you, O Lord. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May, May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. May, May your merciful love be upon us as, as we hope in you, O Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Brothers and sisters, take your share of suffering for the gospel in the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling not in virtue of our works, but in virtue of his own purpose and the grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus ages ago and now has manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with them Peter and James and John his brother and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. Behold, they appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Well, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three booths here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking, when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces, they were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story I like to tell. It's a true story about the transfiguration of a young man called Samuel. It is such a favorite story of mine that I'm pretty sure I've told it to you before. So if I have, forgive me and bear with me. During our time as Jesuit novices, we are sent to work with different NGOs around the city of Cape Town. And I was sent to work at the drop-in center for children who lived on the street. One day a child came in with a deep cut on his foot, and I was asked to wash and bandage it. He was dirty, he was smelly, and he was not pleasant to be around. But it was my job, so I did it. As I knelt before him, he was transformed. It seemed for a few long moments that I was staring up, not at the face of a dirty, smelly young man, but at the face of Jesus. In that moment, Samuel's true identity was revealed. For me, he was Christ himself. That's what the transfiguration in the gospel is all about. Jesus being shown as who he really is. The transfiguration reveals that he is both God and man, two natures in one person. It's not something that he puts on, like we would put on a coat or a blanket. This is the glory that comes from within Jesus. The transfiguration is about Jesus being revealed for who he is and the disciples being able to see into the heart of Jesus and know him. The transfiguration of Jesus and Samuel makes me wonder about our own transfiguration moments and the transfiguration moments of others. Do we reveal to people who we really are? Are there moments when our goodness, our gracedness, shines forth for people to see? 
we are the sons and daughters of God, made in the image of Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit. That's who we really are. Before we are anything else, this is who we are. We show this to the world by how we live and how we love. We show it in the big and little ways that we try and make the lives of those around us better. We show it in how we choose to do the right thing and not just the easy thing. That's how we are transfigured. But then, do we see people how they really are? Are we open to seeing the goodness and the grace within other people? Take Abraham, for example. In the first reading, we hear of him being called by God, taken from his family and kinsmen, and given a new mission to start a new nation and a new people. Most people don't realize it, but he was 75 years old at the time. If he had been put into a box called too old to do anything useful, would he have had the courage to do what he did? Would those around him have listened to him or followed him? Too often we label people. We stereotype them. We can't see the real person because our prejudices get in the way. When we've judged people, put them into a little box which we think describes them perfectly, we are not able to recognize their goodness. When we've judged someone to be selfish or self-centered, we can refuse to see goodness in them when they are generous. We are suspicious of them and look for a hidden agenda. We say they're only being kind because. It is our own blindness that can stop us seeing the transfiguration of those around us. How do we see Jesus in our own lives and in our groups? Do we recognize him when we see him? And now in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth, earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now call upon the God of our ancestors, who is rich in compassion and love towards every generation. That the Lord's mercy be upon the church and be its strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's mercy be upon candidates for reception into full communion of the Catholic Church and be their promise of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's mercy be upon nations and peoples, especially, especially the children of Abraham, and be their source of justice and peace. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's mercy be upon all who are alienated from God and others and be their bond of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's mercy be upon us who are saved by Jesus Christ and be our hope in every difficulty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis for those who have suffered harm from members of the church. May they find within the church herself a concrete response to their pain and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy, you sent your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us from sin and lead us to holiness. Answer our prayers so that we may receive your mercy and share it with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. This is the God forever. We're mingling with us, water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Be Lord God, be pleased with this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told his disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you on earth, and before your majesty we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source of all that is good and holy in the world. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
When supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with Butit Lachale, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, for it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another now a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only you say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, 
we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Almighty God, bless your faithful people with the blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose body, beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace and give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.